All right, 4x and 8x. We have to find a common denominator. Are we all clear we can't do anything right now until we find a common denominator? Let's start with the 4 and the 8. S smallest number both go into. Hello, Carter. That would be an 8. Everyone agree? 4 and 8, smallest number both go into is going to be 8. So we'll at least have a common denominator of 8 something. Now I take care of the x's. Common denominator of x and x is x. Yep. So 8x. Now, some of you may be in the mode of just, has anybody ever just multiplied the denominators? And that's your common denominator. You can do it that way. It's up to you. All right, you just will have to reduce at the end. So your call. Again, you can make this 8x. You could also make it 32x squared. That's totally your call. All right, but if you do it that way, you're going to have to reduce at the end. All right, here we go. Questions, what do you multiply 4x by to get to the 8x? Woo, where'd it go? Come on. One, what do I multiply that 4x by? Two, thank you. So that's what I'm going to multiply the three by to get six. How about the 8x? What do I multiply that one by? Here you go, 13. One, one. yep. So that's going to stay minus three. And you end up with three over. Anybody want to simplify? Simplify? No? Okay, me neither. Okay, six. Different denominators again. Got to find a common one. Well, what's, what number is definitely in our common denominator? Number. It's kid, I go number, kid goes A. Uh, I got a long road ahead of me this year. What num number is definitely in our common denominator? Two. Yep. Oh, boy. Two. Now I got to go A and A squared. And now the question is, which one do you use? The highest exponent is always goes into your common denominator. So it will not be 2a, it will be 2a squared. When you find a common denominator, the variable with the highest exponent goes in. All right, need a little help with what I'm missing here. Uh, number 10, what do I have to multiply a squared by to get 2a squared? Two, thank you. So multiply top and bottom here by two. So that'll be two times five, which is 10. What do I multiply 2a by to get 2a squared? 10 again. Good job. Be confident. So multiply top and bottom by a, so it's going to be minus 3a. Simplify. Simplify. Can you get rid of the a and the a squared? Can you get rid of the 10 and the 2? Guys, what's there? Holding you back is that subtraction sign. Yes, I cannot get rid of those. I can't get rid of those. That subtraction sign is holding me back. That's it. Hands off. We're done. Questions? Oh, you're having fun yet, huh? Yep. What do we only have? Two more to go? Oh, that's unfortunate. Okay, seven. Ooh, hey, how about that denominator? No numbers to deal with. No numbers, but... I won't say anything. I want to see if you can come up with your own common denominator here from what we just talked about. Which variables do you take? We can do it. You can do it. I got faith. Dig deep. Dig deep. Seven. Come on. You got it. Settle down. Good man. Hey, they both have X's, right? So which one do I always take? The one with the highest exponent. They both have Y's. 
Always take the one with the highest exponent. Good man on a roll today. Let's see if your uh, classmates can help you out now. Number 12, what do I multiply xy squared by to get x squared y squared? X, good deal. Okay, now I need help here because I'm not, this is not as easy and I'm not going to do it for you. What do I get when I multiply the numerator by x? What do I get when I multiply the numerator by x? Number five. Can I write xy? Is that okay? Thank you. Nice job. You don't seem too confident. Okay, why don't we, I'm done with her. Why don't we even bother? Why don't we even bother? And how about the next one? What do I multiply by? Hey, 17. Just multiply by y, nice. And somebody multiply by y for me. Go ahead, 13. Plus xy plus y squared. Yep, nice job. All right, uh, we can definitely do a little simplification on top. What do you notice on top when you try to combine anything? 17. The xy's are gone, and what are you left with on top? Minus plus y squared. Okay, I have to sit down because I know I'm going to get heated in a second. Most of some of you, if you know, if you know what's going on, you know what's about to come. X squared plus Y squared. Can we factor that? Why not? How far have we've come in the last week here? Why can I not factor X? They're both perfect squares. Jack, it's addition. It's got to be what? Subtraction. Here's my next question. Can I cross off the X squareds and the Y squareds? No. What's holding you back? The addition. Good. All right. We've come somewhere. Beautiful. Let's just call it a year. Why not? Great job, everybody. Good luck next year. Questions? Because this one's a big one here we're going to end it with. Doesn't look too intimidating, does it? Whew. C minus 5, phi minus C. What have you been calling those? They've, we've been calling them opposites, right? Right, and we've some we've when we've multiplied and divided, we've crossed them out. What are we were left with? A negative one. So here's what I'm going to suggest: when you are adding and subtracting, and your denominators are opposites, all right, take out. Ready? I'm going to keep this one the same. Take out the negative one first from one of the denominators. So I'm going to take this five minus c. I recognize that they're opposites. And here's why. Watch. When I take out the negative 1, what's this 5 going to become? And when I take out the negative 1 from it, what's that 5 going to become? Negative 5. And what's the C going to become? Do you see? No pun intended. Why? I took out the negative 1. Look at the denominators now. What do you notice? They're, oh, they are. Okay, so you know your common denominator is going to have a C minus 5, right? What else do I still need to put in there? Because not everything is represented. You got the C minus 5s in there. What else do I still need to put in my common denominator? The negative 1. So here is the entire common denominator. So when you have opposites, take the negative 1 out. You'll see right away what should go in your denominator. And then I got to put the negative 1 there. Okay, let's see who's on your game today. What do you think I have to multiply this fraction by to make it look like that denominator? Okay, what do I have to multiply this denominator to get to that one? Hold their thought there. Here we go. What do you got for me? Number 19. Good job. Negative 1. I got to multiply this top and bottom by negative 1. 